Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be making one of these super cute patchwork scatter cushions. Now I've used these Harry Potter themed fat quarter bundle fabrics that I picked up from Aldi, but you can use any fabrics that you like. Fat quarter bundles are a really good thing to use for a project like this though, because you get several different fabrics, which looks great for patchwork. This is a nice, simple design with a very easy envelope back. So this project is perfect for beginners and it's one that you can even make along with the kids. So let's take a look at what you need to make your very own patchwork scatter cushions. So here are the ingredients for your patchwork scatter cushion. First of all, of course, you're going to need your fabrics. Today I'm using these Harry Potter themed fat quarter bundles from Aldi. Um, they're really cute but you can use whatever fabrics and whatever designs you want to. You're going to need a sewing machine, of course, and then some coordinating thread. You will need something to cut out with, so either a decent quality pair of scissors or a rotary cutter and mat. These are so handy when it comes to working with fabric, so if you do want to do more in the future, this is well worth investing in. Then you're going to need something to cut out with. So this, is a 24 by six inch quilting ruler. Now these come in so handy for cutting out fabric. So again, if you want to do any more in the future, I'd really recommend investing in one of these. If you don't have one of these, you could use a quilting template. This is a four and a half inch one, and that is the size of squares that we're going to use today, which will leave us with four inch squares by the time we've sewn our quarter inch seam allowances. And finally, you're going to need an 18 inch cushion pad. These are really easy to get hold of as well. What I'll do is I'll pop some links to all of these that are available on Amazon in the box below. So check those out if you're unsure of where to get any of these. So that's all of your ingredients. Let's get on with cutting out our squares. So once you've pressed all of your fabrics, put the one you're using as your backing fabric to one side and then take the first of your front fabrics and just lay it out. What we're going to do first is just square up the end. So take your ruler, if that's what you're using, or your scissors, and just line up and just trim off, just trim off the end so that we know we've got a nice straight line to work with. Then what we're going to do is measure four and a half inches. So each one of our squares is going to be four and a half inches square. So take your ruler, my four and a half inch line is here. So I'm just gonna line that up, make sure it's lined up properly all the way down. And then just cut the whole way along the width of the fabric rather than the length. four and a half inch line there. I'm using the lines on the ruler, not the mat. And then just cut that one. We want to cut four of these four and a half inch squares out of each of our front fabrics. One, two. Three. And the last one. Four. Okay, so you want to repeat that with each of your front fabrics. Four, four and a half inch squares. all of your four and a half inch squares for the front side of your cushion we're going to have a look at the layout so just take your fabrics and start laying them out on your mat so that you can come up with a design that you like There we go, I'm quite happy with that. It's all quite random. You can obviously go in more uniform squares if that appeals to you more, but I like patchwork to be quite random. Okay, great, so now that we've got our pattern designed, it's a good idea to take a quick photo so that you don't forget. 
but um, as we're working on a cushion it's not too many squares so I'm just going to leave those laid out and take them into my machine one by one. So now we've decided the layout of the front of our cushion it's time to sew together our squares. Take your first two squares and then we're going to place them right sides together and square them up. You could use pins if you um, feel a little bit unsure of keeping everything square whilst you're putting it through the machine but I'm just going to lay them right sides together like that and sew them through. Settings wise I've got my straight stitch selected and I'm on a two stitch length on my machine. Also I've got my quarter inch foot on the machine at the moment. You can do this quite easily just with your standard foot. A quarter inch foot just helps you because um, it has a slight guide here. It has lines and it also has an edge guide. So it makes sewing those quarter inch seams so much easier. That's why I've got my foot today. However, you don't need one. So don't feel like you do. You can just do this with a standard foot. Absolutely no problem. Okay, so let's get on with sewing these squares together. Back stitch. first two squares together then we take our next square we're going to pop that right sides together and pop that through the machine and we're going to carry on doing this on each of our rows now that we've sewn our rows together we're just going to give them a quick press and what we're going to do is press these seams open the reason for that is it just creates less bulk behind the seam areas because um, we want the front of our pillow to be nice and flat. Now that we've pressed all of our seams open, it's time to attach our rows together. So we'll take this back over to the sewing machine. So to attach our rows, take your first row and your second row and then you want to place them right sides facing each other then it's worth taking a minute to just make sure that your seams are nicely lined up because that means you'll have nice straight lines on the front of your cushion and then we're just going to send that through the machine again using our quarter inch seam allowance and we're going to do a couple of back stitches just to secure approach that seam, just make sure that it's still lying flat as it goes through the machine. Snip strips. And just carry on, take your next row, pop it right sides facing, line up your seams. And send it through the machine. And the last one, right sides facing, line up those seams, and so. That's our fourth row on, so that's our pillow front complete. We're just going to take it back over to the ironing board and give it a quick press on the back. So we're just going to press open the new seams that we just completed, taking care where they cross over the previous ones to make sure they're nice and flat because it all helps make the front of your pillow lay nice and flat and smooth. Okay, so we've pressed those seams flat so you can see the effect it gives you on the front is just a nice flat pillow front. We're going to take this back to the cutting board now and we're going to cut out our backing fabric. So pop your backing fabric on the cutting mat and what you want to do is cut it so that you've got 
about a quarter to three quarters ratio on the length of your backing fabric. Then we're going to turn those right sides down. What we're going to make is a rolled seam. The easiest way to do that is if you pop your ruler on and you just find your quarter of an inch mark and we're just going to draw a pencil line right the way across the width of our fabric and then we're going to do one more. So line up on that pencil line that you've just drawn and draw yourself a pencil line. You're going to do that on both pieces of the backing fabric. So a quarter of an inch and draw a line, then line up with that one and draw one more line. Then we're going to take that over to the ironing board to give it a press. So here's the first piece of our backing fabric. You can see the pencil lines that we've drawn. We're just going to turn that first to that first line and just press all the way along just following that pencil line which makes it nice and easy to know that you've not gone too far or messed it up and once you've done that you're just going to do the same thing again and this just gives us a really nice neat seam so you've got no raw edges Once you've pressed those seams, they're much easier to manipulate through the machine. Um, so we're going to pop that underneath the presser foot and you just need to watch to make sure you're catching the edge of that seam as you go down. You can see that technique just gives you a lovely neat seam front and back. So repeat that on the other piece of your backing fabric. So now it's time to put all of our pieces together before finally stitching them all together. So take your pillow front and place that down and then you want to take your backing fabric and you want to put them right sides together. We're going to put the smaller piece at the top. And just line that up with the top side of your fabric. And then we're just going to pin all the way around make sure that nothing shifts as we're taking it through the machine. Just check the other side, make sure you're happy with that. Okay, great. Now it's time to take that through the machine and we're going to stitch around all four edges, again using our quarter inch Seam allowance. Okay, so it's time to do our final bit of stitching. I just wanted to mention with this envelope back, it's super important that you have a nice amount of overlap. If you do these too close, when you put your pillow pad in, you're going to have gaping and it's going to show the pillow pad inside, which doesn't look nice. So make sure you've got a nice kind of three or four inches of overlap of that backing fabric to create that envelope finish. So we're going to sew from the front side so that we can keep our seam allowance nice and neat. And we're just going to stitch around all four edges with a quarter inch seam allowance. Back stitch at the corner, put your needle down, and then we're just going to lift the presser foot and pivot the fabric around so that we can keep going in one even straight line seam. Back stitch when you get to this 
envelope bit here. I just like to back stitch over there to give it a little extra strength. take this back over to the cutting mat just to trim everything down. So before we flip this and pop our pillow pad in we're just going to take off all of these excess bits and we're also going to trim down our corners as that helps to get a nice sharp point in your corners. So just watch that you're not going over any of your seams or your stitching obviously just take off any of this excess and then you're ready to flip it which thanks to our envelope back is really nice and easy to do okay so you want to make sure these corners are nicely pushed out it can help to if you grab a pencil with a rubber on the top if you use the rubber end just to poke those corners right out there we go just lay that down i'm going to take that back to the ironing board just to give it one more press before we put our pillow pad in it now that you've pressed your top it's finally time to put your pillow pad inside so really simple to do just stuff it inside make sure you get into the corners so that it looks nice and full smooth out your envelope back and there you go we're all finished your very first patchwork scatter cushion all done I really hope you enjoyed making that along with me I'd love to hear from you in the comments if you've got any questions let me know um, and I'd love to see some of your finished patchwork scatter cushions too so if you could share some of those with me on my social media that would be fantastic I'll post some links below to that make sure as well that you like and subscribe there's going to be more tutorial video videos on the way soon again please let me know if there's anything in particular you would would like to see on the channel and I'll do my best to get that done for you. Anyway that's it for me, take care and bye for now.